Hello, 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 everyone. Good morning. How is everyone doing today? So, oh, that's interesting against the green screen. Okay, have to keep that in mind, but not going to change what shirts I wear. Good morning, Davey. Uh, not much of market reaction. Uh, retail sales, I think that was a pretty big miss. We'll get into that in a second. But again, everything's waiting on the FOMC at 2 Eastern. And then the press conference after that. Uh, Aloha. Is that like a hello from Hawaii? Aloha. Good morning, Pow Pow Day. <laughs> well, good morning, Wavy. What a mess. We ain't even started trading. <laughs> everything's a mess not risking trades that's if you if you can sit out sit out i mean it's actually the better thing to do in my in my mind there's just too much stuff going on there's just too much variability it's it, it's crazy and is all right if they hike if they only go 50 is that considered dovish because and then i don't even know anymore i give up i don't even know how to interpret what they're gonna do by the way, Goldman now expects uh, 75 in June, 75 in July, and then 50 in September. Yeah, ECB meeting was a train wreck. Oh, are they going to go back in with the PEP bonds? Are they going to reinvest? It? ECB it, it, it is a walking disaster in my mind. They had that emergency press conference. Uh, walking disaster. They don't, I mean, they make our Fed look credible. Good morning, Patrick. All right, uh, Elon in trouble with everyone. He, it's still nighttime in Hawaii. Yes, it is. It is. Is it? Uh, but good morning. Love the shirt. Thank you, Kalani. Are you wearing pants? Yes, I am wearing. I'm wearing shorts. But this is this is uh, the Terrapin Station dead tie dye shirt. That's why it's coming out. There's some green on it. Terrapin Station. So, uh, morning, morning. By the way, is any if anybody listens to Dead and Company, the uh, June eleventh show I really liked I was getting through the June uh, the thirteenth show last night. Uh, so happy Wednesday! I don't know. I'm good morning. All these fat cat Wall Street people should be flying into Bitcoin instead. They're making it. Uh. Bitcoin needs a flush out move. There's too much garbage. There's too much crap in it. It's it needs a flush out move before it can be again at least partially taken seriously. Uh there's way too much. Besides that 75, there's way too many other rules. That's why I hold off because it'll just cause people doing it worse on it. Because there's a lot of other other nuances. Welcome to quad witching. Yes, it is quad witching. Save my other pair for the market open. Good morning, Options 22. Good morning, Anissa. 10,000. It was over 19,000 altcoins. I mean, we need to... Uh, I'll, I'll give some more stuff out, but I just don't want to confuse people, especially this week. We need to focus on trading. By the way, if you are new here... Please do consider subscribing, ringing that bell, and hitting the like button longer term. Subscribers, please leave some comments like you've been doing and like the videos. We're looking to still get more people on here. Switching over. Yeah, 18,000. I saw 19,000. It's just insane. All right, so retail sales. By the way, the mortgage numbers weren't as bad. And that's for uh, some of the stuff from the back in the 10th of June. Retail sales, though. Remember, this is not inflation adjusted. So... Retail sales month over May, and so inflation artificially boosts retail sales, okay, because they measure the 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 total dollar volume, so if prices are going up. So in this, they forecast two, revised with seven, so this is even coming down, and we got 0.3 X autos. So 0.5 versus 0.8. So that is even worse. The consumer is starting to get already buttoning, battening down the hatches. Export prices higher than normal. Import prices slightly lower. A Fed index back in contraction. I actually was expecting it to shift to expansion into contraction again. Not as bad as the previous, but that's still contraction. So... 
what's interesting is we have the consumer already possibly starting to uh, to say, okay, they're like gas and food and everything are starting to take its toll. So they're, they're not going to be spending in other areas. So this could really get into the stagflation recessionary thing. Keep in mind, business inventory is going to be minor, but just pay attention. There could be a minor volatility then, but then everything's the FOMC. And remember, the press conference is going to be huge too. All right, so don't just get, you know, and that's 30 minutes after the release. So don't just get complacent with, all right, we got the volatility from the release out of the way because this can go on for a while. And since there's so many different expectations and what people are projecting and everything else, we could really get some pretty severe volatility. Uh, remember, if we are rallying, especially if we start getting momentum bars in the NASDAQ after the potential first fake out move, if we are rallying, the stuff I'm looking to are some mega caps like I reviewed yesterday and junk stuff like ARC stuff. Okay, why? Because you can short squeeze that. And mega caps also move the indices higher. And that uh, we are in negative gamma still. Remember, so you can get vol, and that doesn't mean just mean to the downside. You can, especially if it gets momentum to the upside, you can really get some moves. By the way, a, a FedWatch tool on the CME, fully baking in that 75 at 97. And, you know, it's now the, the 50 basis points completely fallen off. And now there's the 2.2% chance of the 100 basis point. Uh, so mm -hmm. and you're more and more people calling for that. All right. Not much with earnings today, just for the point of completeness. That is done. Uh, thing I'm keeping an eye on, you know, a little bounce back. I'm just keeping an eye on this little flag pattern going into the open. I'm expecting a choppier trading, though, you know, until the FOMC stuff. So there's not much, unless we did get some momentum bars, there's not much. This is what I'm watching. Uh, major levels now on a rally. It's closed into the, it's potentially going to close in the four hour rotation zone. My major targets are 3,800, this little resistance ledge. And then 38.29. If we roll down, first of all, would be yesterday's lows, of course, right around the 3,700. Then I'd be targeting 36.83. And then let me get to uh, the bigger target here. Hold on. The bigger target would be about 30 if we really tanked would be about 3646 so that's uh what i am keying off of upside and downside being very very cautious today again it's pretty much sit on hands u.s exporters were i did not see that thanks waka waka what's up with the volatility in crude we've got a lot of stuff going on with, you know, there's stuff still in the Middle East and you have the Biden silly email to the executive. I, I don't even want to get started. Really? You're going to... Oh, boy. Good morning, Lauren. Yep. People are going to just spend on the needs, which are quite expensive. As I said yesterday, I filled up the car. 87 bucks. I used to spend under that in an entire month this was one fill up and it was 87 dollars so it's it's crazy yeah we should have the mike and bob price action coin i would never do that boy ugh disgust me uh still for the uh for the nas we still do have the potential double bottom. All right. So 11, 530, If I was going to trade this early, it'd have to be on a closing basis, at least on a uh, closing basis. That would be, have to actually happen in the next 45 minutes above there. And then aggressively move up the stop 11,659, 11,721, 11,783. To the downside targets, 11, 
132 and then 11,034 to 11,000. Uh, let's just see. I want to reverse this also. I want to go over here just to see where this sits. That's going to change it slightly. But there's that 1134 reinforced right there. Then on a major tank, oh, 10,808. Uh, if we did have something surprise the downside. Again, I'm still focused. If we do get these breaks, the upside. We're also keep in mind, like you see on the NASDAQ, you're into a clear path move and you still have the gap. So there are magnets to the upside, and look where that gap is, just pointing stuff out. Look where the gap is, right returns to the daily rotation zone and the prior support becoming resistance. So this is very key if we get that potential rip your face off rally. Peeking back at the S&P, you have that gap right at the daily rotation zone and the prior support becoming resistance, so the breakdown zone. So those, if you get a massive rally, are your key targets. Dow, you see that pretty much the same. Everything's trading in such lockstep. Breakdown zone, gap, daily rotation zone, shorter term charts. You have the flag that, you know, this little flag thing. Uh, you also had waning momentum with this spike low. So it's, it could get very interesting this afternoon. Again, I don't know how it's going to react. Because A, I don't now know if they're going to go 50 or 75 or 1 or what their hike is. But then I don't know what they're going to project. Again, Bob texted me Goldman was 75, 75, and 50, which would be substantially more aggressive than what things are expecting. Russell, pretty much, oh, don't. Back to the daily you uh not much of the gap in here with the russell just a minor gap but the rotation zones right in front of it other than that let's just check in on some other markets dax trying to find some support by the way dax daily cycles turning up so i'm expecting a return let me reverse this with the cycles turning up, I'm expecting a potential rally to fill the gap in the DAX over the next couple days with and then 13774. Crude. Keeping a close eye. The double's been confirmed. I need a a close below this 11747. And then I am targeting these bigger pullback areas, especially 114.60 and 113.90. Where does that take us in relation to the daily? It actually takes us back down closer. If we do have this pullback, it would still be in higher lows and higher highs. But I'd be watching really a potential return to 111 or 112 area, 111.76 to 112 uh, for the bigger corrective move. And that this, the first target, that would just take us back into the weekly rotation zone, which has held nicely on this whole up move. What else? Oh, the notes, pretty substantial bounce back move off this 114.09 harmonic. And it did trigger an aggressive buy pattern right here. This was an aggressive buy, and it's continued to rally. The next major target, if this rallies, is 115.25. If it does roll over, I'm watching for a retest of the low area. Again, everything has to be very nimble. Do dollar pulled back into the four-hour rotation zone and rotating higher again. Especially after that e joke of an ECB meeting. So... Uh, I'm just going to see if we get some follow through here. Now, if we do roll over, yes, you could have a potential head and shoulders pattern on here. So that's the only other thing that I'm watching. We don't have a well-formed right shoulder yet, but if we were to roll over, we potentially could. And then again, you have an advanced clear path coming down here. So that could be a little topping reversal move. Keep an eye on that. VIX right now still holding in this range. For if we start getting below uh, the low from the 13th, so Monday's low, remember we do have a gap. So if we're rallying and we start trading aggressively below the low, that's going to sustain the rally. Other than that, it's just sitting here on another inside bar for Monday. 
that's really about it. Let's check in on Tesla and then I'll get to some of the other ETFs. Tesla looks like a slight gap up this morning. Keep in mind, you still have a gap fill play to the upside. All right. You can see that here. You see this close to this open. So the close right here, uh, 696.69. That's the, that's the only bullish thing. Besides then, yes, you do still have a potential uh, double bottom for a bigger rally. And remember, Tesla can be rolled in as a, if it, they start buying. If, the, if we get the rallies and they're juicing up the mega caps too, that's when I'll really keep an eye on Tesla. So on a rollover play, if it does roll down, if something, the market just got hammered below 620, 599, then 578 major cluster area. On the queues, not much has changed. This is no longer there. You have this little... It, this is horribly sloppy, but you, you start re really the big thing in the shoes. I mean, we're up here pre-market. The big thing in the queues is the, the gap fill play. So key areas I'd be watching on the queues, 281.05, because that's the 50% from the gap fill play. And then the real thing to trigger the gap fill play is 282. And just a close over 283 then we get the full blown gap fill play so that's where we sit to the downside 271.62 are the key levels the gap fill play also you see with the daily rotation zone coming in still above there and that's where with the breakdown zone so on bullish moves, that's the thing. And then on a continued bullish move, keep in mind, you do have another gap fill play there. Spiders. Coming to the harmonic cluster area. That's all done. You don't have that pot uh, potential double. Again, this is also your gap fill play. Your levels on the spiders. Key area. Hold on one second. Key area is uh, about 380.25. And then the thing that really triggers the gap fill play is 382.50. So those are the key targets that I will be using intraday off of that. Yeah, I covered that. I, uh, is a double bot? Yes, the double bottom on the NASDAQ is still valid. The ones on the queues aren't, but the double bottom on the NASDAQ is still valid for the break to the upside. Good morning, Swagetti. Good morning, Rams of Fall. Yes, I am sporting Terrapin Station. Terrapin Station shirt. Terrapin Station tie-dye. Uh, European gas just jumped 10% on gas front, just cut off another compressor. It's going to get interesting with a natty gas. Uh, what are your thoughts on Meta being at PE12? I'm more interested at it on it. Uh, we're going to start getting some earnings compression, though, so that will naturally start creeping up, but I'm watching for a longer-term bottom. Still don't have it. I mean, right now, there's the only upside is a, a gap play on this rally. But we don't have a great long-term bottoming play. There might be a a swing trade coming up, uh, but not a solid play. And on any rally, it'd be just a return initially to target the rotation zone. But I am getting more interested. But we're going to go into earnings compressions also. So please keep that in mind. Er and what's earning compression in this kind of environment? Uh, you start seeing people say all oh, the PEs back down to this level, but if earnings start dropping, then naturally the PE ratio increases, even if the stock price stayed the same. But it is much more attractive down here. Good morning, Paul. 
And on a stronger rally, the major resistance now is 198.83. Thank you, Brian. That's a nice comment. Thank you. Uh, what else we talked about? This is something I'm really going to be interested on today. Also, this NVIDIA gap play. Should we get a nice rally going? NVIDIA gap play up to about 169.50. So keep an eye on that one. What else? And just what I'm saying, if I'm playing, looking to play junk, I'm really looking to play uh, ARC above about 38.50. And then we have a gap fill play there. And yes, this is a valid double bottom, by the way. If, we, if it had an extended rally. Not expecting that today. That would just take it into the back into the weekly rotation zone. So, yes, exactly. To get to Terrapin, very good. Uh, hey Ramsfall, have you listened? Have you heard any of the uh, new uh, Dead and Company shows? Did you hear the one from June eleventh, Dodger Stadium? I thought that was they pretty good. Pretty good. First time they ever did. Uh, a couple things, you know, rolling into Hey Jude. So, you are very welcome. Yes, be patient today. Do not force things. And remember for the potential fake out move. With that, I'm going to get ready for the open. Yeah, they did uh, the first time ever. Dear Mr. Fantasy into uh, Hey Jude which hasn't been done since the Brent times. So, yeah, that was really interesting. And then they, they finished it up uh, with Werewolves of London. Excellent show, in my opinion. Fantastic show. I mean, it was a staple of a, pretty much their greatest hits, but it was still super well done. Really liked it. Going to be a massive tour this summer. Fun, fun times. With that, I am going to bring it. Yes, the Brent days. So... That's where we stand. I will if I don't think there's going to be anything happening before lunch, so everything's going to be after, and it gets a little busy. I can't do the live stream during the uh, FOMC stuff, but that's where we sit. You are welcome, everybody. Sorry to get into the Dead and Company little sidetrack there. It's just my relaxation at the end of the day, so. You are welcome, everybody. I will talk to you after the close. Again, be safe. If you don't have anything, sit on your hands. Thank you for being here, Anissa. Keep your capital dry and watch for those momentum, potentially to the upside especially. Talk to everyone later. Bye.